hello students after interference next optical phenomena that is based on wave nature of light is diffraction of light so now we are going to study about diffraction of light since we know that light travels in a straight line and when light passes through a small hole uh, there is a certain amount of spreading of light means light is spread to a certain amount whenever it pass through a small hole similarly when there is some obstacle in the path of light ray it appears to bend around the edges of that obstacle and enters its geometrical shadow okay so the phenomena of this bending of light around the corner of small obstacles or apertures and the spreading into the regions of geometrical shadow that is called diffraction of light so diffraction of light is basically the phenomena of bending of light we can define diffraction of light as phenomena of bending of light around the corners of small obstacles or apertures and its consequent spreading into the region of geometrical shadow so this phenomena is called diffraction of light uh, we can see in the diagram that because of this small obstacle the light bends and it is spread into the region of its geometrical shadow and this phenomena is called diffraction of light the first diagram here shows the case of aperture right if we see the light should go like this but because of this aperture it bends and enter the region that is of geometrical shadow region and this phenomena is called bending uh, of light or diffraction of light because of this aperture now if there is an obstacle instead of aperture this is uh, this was an aperture and this is an obstacle ab now this time light ray should give us a geometrical shadow a dash b dash like this a darker shadow a dash b dash however uh, when the obstacle ab is placed in path of light we 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 was expecting we were expecting a dark shadow a dash b dash on the screen however when we observe it we get a circular bright band at the center surrounded by dark and bright fringes so in this case what we get we get a circular bright band at the center surrounded by dark and bright rings alternately now this rings are called fringes and this shows that light bends around the edges and light can show the phenomena of diffraction however for the phenomena of diffraction the size of obstacle matters so first now we are going to discuss about the size of aperture or obstacle for observing now the comparison of size of aperture or obstacle with a wavelength can be understood by the following diagrams so if we have the size of aperture which is greater than the wavelength that we are incidenting so we are incidenting plane wave fronts of wavelength lambda on the aperture or the obstacle and the size of aperture is much greater than the wavelength lambda so in that case the amount of bending we obtain in diffracted wave fronts these are the diffracted wave fronts so in this wave fronts the amount of bending that we obtain is much small in comparison to that we obtain in case of the size of aperture which is comparable to the size of wavelength so if size of aperture is comparable to that of wavelength or almost equal to that of wavelength in that case the bending we obtain 
is comparatively large or the diffracted waves that we are getting are almost spherical in case in which size of aperture is approximately is equal to wavelength so yahan par we get a spherical diffracted waves or wave fronts right while in case in which size of aperture is greater than the wavelength this, uh, the bending is a small the here small bending and diffracted wave fronts are not that curved as compared to this case so bending is a small in this case while in that case uh, where size of aperture is approximately is equal to wavelength or small yahan par aapko large bending observe hoga or the waves we get will be spherical okay this is the comparison of size uh, comparison of size of aperture or obstacle with the wavelength of that light we are using not about the types of diffraction so there are two types of diffraction first is fresnel diffraction second is fraunhofer diffraction so there are two types of diffraction first is fresnel diffraction the second one is the fraunhofer diffraction the main difference between the two fresnel and fraunhofer diffraction is that in case of fresnel diffraction source and screen are placed close to the aperture and obstacle either aperture or obstacle will be there and the distance between source and screen both are placed close to that aperture or obstacle so that diffraction light after diffraction appears converging towards the screen and no lens is required in this case no lens is required to observe that diffracted wave fronts on the screen no lens is required in case of fresnel diffraction while in case of fraunhofer diffraction source and screen are placed at large distances and why large distances we mean that the distances which are effectively equivalent to infinity means very large distances so the the source and the screen are placed at large distances from aperture or obstacle and since they are at a very large distance the light rays don't bend on the screen to give us diffraction so for that we have to use converging lens to observe diffraction in case of fraunhofer diffraction so in case of fraunhofer diffraction converging lens or a convex lens is used to observe diffraction effectively on the screen this is the fraunhofer diffraction so that's all for the video for further videos stay tuned and keep studying thank you